going to close, and they've asked me to talk a little bit about uh, the economics, if you will, of the opportunity and the potential impact it may have on cataract surgery worldwide. You can see that the Plenzec is already a global uh, group, and uh, I would like to uh, reaffirm that I do serve as a consultant for uh, Plenzec, but I also uh, consult for other companies in the femtosecond laser field, including AMO and Bausch and Lohmann and Alcon. Uh, and actually was an early investor in Lenzar when they were approaching Presbyopia. So I've been interested in the femtosecond laser uh, for a long time, as well as worked with Intralase early on. So what about the size of the uh, opportunity in, in Cataraki uh, of being able to charge a patient to enhance a refractive outcome? Really was pioneered with the uh, Presbyopia <laughs> correcting and now toric intraocular lenses. And that occurred in the US approximately 2005. Most of you are familiar with the story. It's certainly firmly uh, entrenched. And the concept is that uh, if we're offering the patient refractive surgery, that's a non covered service. We remove the cataract at a standard fee, uh, whatever that might be, depending on the carrier. Uh, and then we have patients who want to be less dependent on glasses, they want their astigmatism treated. They want their presbyopia potentially treated, and uh, we can charge the patient uh, an appropriate fee for that service. And this is going to basically be a refractive surgical procedure. And one of the key things uh, that we are going to uh, need to show, and I believe we already are showing, is that we can enhance the spherical outcome, the defocus is going to be more accurate with the uh, Lens X laser, and also uh, the uh, stigmatism is manageable. And we're all quite comfortable uh, with charging for that when we provide that to the patient. It will be a discussion with the patient as to whether or not they would like to have that. Now, cataract technology is complex. We like to think we do a great job with cataract surgery, but as we were showing earlier, there really is uh, a significant complication rate and also not uh, a very good efficacy in achieving target refraction. I think uh, Guy Kazarian's work is one of the better in this area. And the target that we need, certainly at least with a premium in our idea, is going to do is to significantly reduce the complications. And the same thing was true with intralase LASIK. In our practice, we found that we had a higher number of patients, about 10% more, with intralase that achieved 2020 with one procedure, a nice uh, refractive uh, benefit. And uh, we also found that we reduced our enhancement rate from 6% to 3%. But the main thing <coughs> we found with intralase LASIK is we significantly reduced the complication rate. And basically, that was what really drives it in our practice to almost 100% intralase. It's a safety factor. So we're going to provide a refractive benefit, if you will, that's going to give us a, a license to hunt the outcomes. Now, the premium surgeon is going to probably be adopted really early, but I spent two, 10 years as the chief of ophthalmology at the VA hospital in, uh, in Minneapolis. And that was the busiest surgical VA uh, in America when I was the chief. And I think the perfect location for this technology is also going to be in the public hospital. And uh, Zoltan's at a university hospital, but we had a 10% vitreous loss rate in my VA. And we had wet labs and worked with the residents, et cetera. And if I were the chief of Minneapolis VA, I'd be putting an order in for one of these right now because the other thing is this is going to be a great public health benefit. This is going to increase the reproducibility of outcome in an operation that's done nearly 20 million times a year in the world and significantly lower the complication rate and make the uh, less skilled surgeon able to perform at a higher level. Perfect capsulorexis, perfect incisions, a softer lens, so the less uh, endothelial cell damage, <coughs> less ultrasound power, less capsular tears, less vitreous loss. Safety is going to also drive this significantly. So it's not to impose just femtofaco. This is going to be a refractive surgery tool. This is going to create perfect incisions. This is going to reduce complications, enhance refractive outcomes. And it's going to, I think, be not just premium surgery uh, in the long run. This is going to end up being something that will be driven by outcomes to the point where I think we'll see it in our VA hospitals, our military hospitals. I wouldn't be surprised, since they have the money now, that they'll be some of the first to uh, buy this technology and apply it. And in the end, the beneficiary will be consistent cataract surgery uh, is, uh, in my opinion, uh, for real. And uh, it's getting pretty sophisticated now. We know that femtosecond uh, lasers are a great cutting tool, but uh, this is Lens X work, but Optometica, Lens R uh, are also looking at this, so is AMO. 
uh, Femtech and others, but uh, using OCT intraoperatively, you can basically now just sit there and design what you want this to do, create a perfect capsule rectus, go in and either uh, soften the nucleus, cut it into quadrants, cut it into six pieces, etc., and you can line this up more or less perfectly uh, as to exactly what you want to do, and then you can make the incisions, uh, and you'll be able to actually do limbal and corneal relaxing incisions, and actually, uh, it'll also be a post-op enhancement tool. And so for a lot of surgeons, uh, there's only about 2,500 of the 10,000 U.S. cataract surgeons that are uh, uh, extra laser trained. And this uh, can also treat hyperopia, myopia, and enhance uh, presbyopia with various patterns of uh, intrastromal femtosecond energy. So I see us actually sitting at one of these femtosecond uh, workstations. Yep, now I don't have it. Next. I did have it a minute ago. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to run the videos and things because I think I'm taking a little bit too much time, but this just shows a, a lens X capsulotomy. And uh, next slide. And uh, accuracy is unbelievable as far as what you want to get versus what we do with a mechanical capsular axis. Why does this matter? Well, it turns out that, according to the experts, Warren Hill and others, that effective lens position the last thing that we need to solve as far as accuracy is effective lens position and a reproducible accurate capsule rexus is probably the best next thing we can do. And we don't do too, too well, really. We only get about 50 to 60 percent of our patients within a half a diopter. With a perfect capsule rexus, we might maybe get 70 or uh, 80 percent, which would certainly be good. And some of the new lenses, like Synchrony, really do need uh, a perfect capsule rexus to perform uh, ideally. Next. Uh, we can also make uh, incisions, and while we do pretty well with uh, diamond blade, we do have hypotony, we do have endophthalmitis, etc. Uh, and so basically we can make uh, uh, very nice incisions, uh, including perfect uh, corneal limbal relaxing incisions, and then we uh, also can soften the nucleus. And if you go through the world literature, we all know that softer the lens, the lower the trauma, uh, the less likely to have an untoward outcome. And uh, so as a, in quotes, advanced private practice surgeon, this is pretty neat, but I spent 10 years as the chief at our VA hospital when I was on the university, and this would be pretty neat to have at a VA hospital, for example, where we run like a 10% complication rate. Now, we still gonna want to train surgeons to do this manually, but I think this is really gonna change things uh, in cataract surgery. And uh, we do, uh, you know, we do have an issue certainly with cost but uh, I think this is going to significantly enhance the safety margin of surgery, and I think most patients are probably going to be willing to absorb the additional cost, and with it, they're going to get a significant uh, refractive uh, outcome benefit as well. So uh, there's lots of videos being shown all around. The lens X is down on the, on the floor, uh, but basically uh, uh, I'll just throw it out as an opportunity for discussion. Already we have FDA approval with one company uh, with lens X. Uh,